My work has been impacted by the GDHD initiative, mainly by being a, a very large new tool in my toolbox um, from a capital perspective and also from a knowledge perspective and access perspective, access to knowledge, which is important. Our work at Quest CDC and Quest Venture has been grown through our involvement with growing diverse housing developers, uh, which has positioned us well to leverage both the for-profit and the nonprofit side of real estate development and community and economic development. This program is offering me um, financing. It's offering me opportunity to meet and just sort of learn from other developers so that we can sort of develop best practices and figure out going forward how we're gonna grow. This grant literally was the catalyst for us being able to take the opportunity to step out on our own and have a foundation to start our company and leverage other monies to help give us a runway. JDHC has been instrumental in helping us to sustain us off, to pay for community engagement, allows us to really invest in the communities that we care about. What influenced me to become a real estate developer is, honestly, I didn't think I was a real estate developer at first. I knew I was just unhappy with what black and brown communities looked like uh, from my hometown in Detroit, Michigan, over to Knoxville, Tennessee, and then landed here in Atlanta, Georgia. And they all had the same DNA, underinvested, underserved, uh, crime-ridden, low housing, uh, blighted structures. Uh, so I decided that I wanted to actually house vulnerable individuals that were living, being homeless. For me, it was really about, I was raised in Atlanta, um, grew up here, and as I was working in what for me was originally uh, the technology sector, I started seeing the transformation of Atlanta. Neighborhoods that historically been black and neglected were starting to transition, i.e. gentrify, and I realized that that was just the beginning. Uh, so for me, it was really personal. One major challenge that I've faced as a person of color in real estate development is being the subject of institutional racism from financial institutions at times. And what I mean by institutional racism is not a deliberate attack against anyone. It is just old architecture that was exclusive that needs to be re-architected and inclusive. One of the biggest challenges as, as a black female developer is access to capital. People don't like to lend in the neighborhoods that I develop in. And people also have a higher, or I would say banks have a higher standard for people who look like me. Being a double minority, a woman and black, um, makes it doubly hard uh, to often, you know, be at the table to get the kind of resources you need. My color and being a black male, uh, I've had to continuously prove to lenders and donors and those that I'm asking for support from that I'm capable and have the bandwidth to do this. We really had to create these new models um, for opportunity for access. Um, but accessing the capital to do that has been, you know, just a challenge. It's a, it's a challenge for everyone, honestly. Um, but when you're doing something that is inclusive from an affordability standpoint, uh, oftentimes people don't understand that. To some extent, access to capital is never the same. Um, your voice is harder to be heard, um, and we're always having to justify um, why we are doing what we're doing differently. The opportunity to now participate in a program that's advancing our ability to scale up, that means personnel, also means business planning, and also scale up from a capital access perspective, um, both relationships with traditional uh, banks, as well as access to more equity capital that we use in order to actually create the projects. In three words, what does affordable housing mean to me? Equity. Access. Equitable. Inclusion. Community, which is people. Housing, of course. And for all.